Welcome to Super Buddies Forever. And today we're concentrating on step one, prepping the boxes for our Ever After High dorm rooms and bedrooms. Of course, with the examples I have in the middle, you can use this for Barbie, Monster High, Disney, whatever you prefer. Many people say they don't have enough space. Well, here is how you can use four foot by one foot of space to make 28 rooms or more. Our Monster High dollhouse was made out of a lot of wood. This one I'm going to do out of cardboard and on a budget. $20 per room for the room and the bed. So I'm starting off with a shipping box, 12 by 12 by 12. That's one foot each way. These are $1.99 for one or 99 cents per if you buy five. So I bought many all at once. Here's our supplies. Scissors or a cutting knife. Either will do some kind of marking tool. I prefer the Sharpie because you can see it better, but either would do well. The glue. I particularly am liking this tacky glue the first time I've used it, but Elmer's school glue would work just fine as well. And then we'll need some tape. Um, I got both of these. The staples stuff I'm finding is better than the scotch. The scotch kind of lets go after a little while. It's better for shipping packages. This is definitely, it's a move, they're both called moving tape, but the Scott, the Staples one does seem to stick a little bit better. I have a tool for holding the tape and using it, cutting it. If you have one, it's good. If not, we always have scissors or our teeth, of course. That is some general supplies to get started on our dorm rooms. Using our 99 cent cardboard box as a room, I'm going to first mark it. It has this little extra flap where it's glued together and I want to make sure and be aware that that is on the wall and not on the floor because that will disrupt what we put there and make the floor lumpy and bumpy, which we don't want. I'll explain the rest later. So I am taking my little marker and I'm making a mark to be sure I don't forget what is the top so that I know for sure. I also wrote left and right, and that'll explain itself later if you're doing Ever After High. While it's here, I press in, which ends up being the back wall, together, and this is a way to start begin beginning to make it square, as square as we can. So I just put a little piece of tape to hold it. There we go. So now I'm going to put some glue on it. The tape is good, but I want the glue to give it some extra hold for the future. We're putting all this work into it. Of course, I want it to last. Tape, it does tend to disintegrate and come apart after a while, so I'll put the glue on for a little extra hold. Then I will take one or two, sometimes three little pieces, curl them with the sticky side out, just giving me some more hold while the glue dries so I can have it dry in place. Now I'll put those flaps over but I won't push too hard and I'll only put just a little piece of tape again to hold it. Again try and get it square. It'll never be perfect but the best you could try is awesome. Then I flip on the inside and I look. Are my two flaps nice and flat? Sometimes when I did this they did overlap and I don't want that to happen because that is going to be the back wall and when we put the wall paper on it. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'll push it down and every now and then I'll stick my hand in there to push down the glue. So now I can do my permanent. I've got it where I wanted. Put my full piece of tape to hold the whole thing. I'm not going to put too much tape on it because eventually we're going to stick all these boxes together so I want to make sure there's paper on paper. So here you could cut off all of the end flaps if you'd like. I'm only going to do two per room off and leave two on because I want to do have good support since mine is going so tall I want to make sure I have it stable on the bottoms and tops. So here I'm just cutting one side off and then the opposite side off. I fold it a little bit to make the cut a little nicer and neater. And that comes off pretty smooth and pretty easy. The knife is certainly easier than the scissors. Scissors, you will get a sore hand after a little while. 
So now I have those off. Remember to have your parents' permission if you are using the knife instead of the scissors. So as for my side flaps, I'm going to do the same I did. Put some glue on it, flip it over, and in this case I can just use an entire piece of tape to hold it down. When that glue dries, I'm feeling pretty confident that is going to be very nice and secure. Flip it over on my opposite side, do the same thing. And if you notice, every now and then I'll stick my hand in the bottom as I'm going along. And even when it was set next to me, I would do the last one I did to push that glue in on the back wall. Just to make sure it was sticking and staying for later. So now I have my top. Let's put it on the stack. Setting it in place, my flaps are on the left and right. And the piece cut off is on the bottom. I'm going to do the whole row like that. And then on the next row, I'm going to flip it on its side and make the flap be on all of the tops. So one or the other should always be supporting the hole. And when you're done, you got lots of cardboard left over. So I'm going to show that again because it kind of sounds confusing. But if, especially if you're doing a tall unit like mine, I think I should explain more. This whole row has the flaps folded on the bottom and then the row underneath has the flaps folded on the side so I will alternate each row so one row is giving the next be it above it or below it support the dolls aren't very weighty but if you start putting stuff in it they might start to sag and this I think is going to be a perfect solution for that not happening in doing that, the opposite is also going to be kissing on the walls as they're touching each other. You'll have one flap touching and one flap not, and that will lend support to the sides. So remember I talked about that little extra flap I was trying to make sure was on the side, and I said left and right? Well, with my crash course of Ever After High, I am learning they have dorm rooms and they are roommates. So I want to be sure that that flap is on the left and on the right of the two box pairs I'm doing. I am not going to make them share room. I definitely don't want that flap on the floor to make my floor warped. Here's a crude drawing of my basic plan for the dorm rooms. And the two roommates would be sharing one on each side with a door. So here's where I'm showing that the bed is going to cover that flap. So even if the paper is a little messed up or the wall design, the bed will cover that up. So I have that on my left and on my right, and I did mark that on my boxes. And you don't have to worry about that if you're not doing dorm rooms. I tried to be consistent with my back flaps being all up and down. So now I have a perfect little spot for the door to be on each side without that flap being in the way of me having a smooth door in the middle of the two coming together. I hope that made sense. This basic plan leaves a nice space open here for something more geared to each doll and their character. Be it whatever you want to do and whatever way I decide to do myself as well. Each doll I'm just showing you fits in, so this doesn't have to be just about Ever After High, Monster High, fits in perfectly in the 12, and this is a Disney doll, I believe, and her hair, it's a little close with that hairdo, and any other ones with big hair might have to sit down for display, but not too bad for such an inexpensive design. Here we have Barbie. She's just about topping off there. She might have to sit in a chair in the corner. But as long as her hair is not too big, she should be good. So let's get back to the Ever After High. If not sitting, they have a perfect spot there to be displayed. I think this is going to work out okay. Here's a quick visual for their height compared to their bed size. Perfecto. Well, as I stack them higher, of course, they were starting to tilt backwards. So I remember all those loose pieces. Well, I'm going to make sure I save some to stick in between as shims to level it out. We'll have to wait for part four until I get a 
good amount of these ready to start taping them together and see how we do that. That one will take a little bit more time. But I have a feeling I'll work it out. What's nice about these is how you can rearrange them. High, tall, many, short. I think you could even go around a window if you had to. Don't forget to watch part two where I go over a $20 budget with a full list and supplies and their variations and how you can swip and swap things to play with your budget and still get everything you need and more for $20 or even in some cases less.